Hey, what's up everybody in YouTube world? This is Barnun11970, and I thank you for watching my video. Alright guys, let's get into this. Now, I'm not going to go into the full details of how the Federal Reserve works and how we borrow money. So if you want the full details, there are plenty of other websites that will give you that information. I'm just going to give you the basics, but I'm going to put it in a way that especially somebody that's just finding out about this stuff or doesn't know very much about it, I could put it in a different perspective that might be more simplified so you can kind of understand how our government is screwing you over. Now, I'm only talking about the United States of America Corporation. I'm not talking about anywhere else. So you would have to check your uh, the way your country works as far as the finances are concerned and see if it's similar to ours. So this is primarily for people who live in the United States of America Corporation. And if you don't know why I call it that, you might want to look that up as well. All right. So we basically know, or if you don't know, you're about to know, that we borrow money from a foreign bank called the Federal Reserve. If you don't know that, that's something you're going to also want to research, because that's a basic 101 at this point. But you never know, there might be somebody that's just new to this and doesn't know about this stuff. So the Federal Reserve is a private-owned bank that is not part of the United States of America Corporation, which we get our money from, which obviously... When we borrow money, we have to pay it back, which is primarily what most of our taxes are used for, besides paying for wars and other things like that. It's not really the bridges and roads like they really make you think it is. Partially, but not, not much. So when you see the deficit and how they try and raise the debt ceilings or they borrow more money, think of it with this perspective, and it should show you how easily the government is screwing you over. Let's say, for some reason, you're able and you get approved for a loan for $100,000, but you only make about $15,000 a year. Now, just paying the principal back alone would be difficult for you, but when you add interest on top of it, it's going to accumulate and make it become more and more difficult to pay. So let's say, okay, I get approved for a credit card, and I'm going to pay back the loan with the credit card. Well, now you can't pay the, the new loan with the credit card because of the higher interest. So think of what the deficit is reached, and they extend it or borrow more money. Think of it like us taking that credit card that we just used to pay off the original loan. And instead of us working off to pay off the debt and making real money, which is the closest thing we could talk about right now as far as fiat, because it's not really real money, but we're not getting into that here. But instead of paying down the debt, we get another credit card to pay off the next credit card loan plus that interest, and then so on and so on. In other words, you're using credit to pay off the newest loan because you can't afford to pay it. Now, see how that doesn't make sense and how a credit card company would never allow you to do that? So think about every time the Federal Reserve gives money to our country, we use it for whatever we use it for, because we'll never really know what they use everything for, because they're not exactly the most honest people in government. And if you look at our country, we spend more than we bring in. That's why countries like China, Japan, Germany, they import more then we export to them. So we're not making enough money to pay back the deficit. So what the geniuses in the government decide is, okay, instead of trying to either stop borrowing money or creating more jobs and stop putting jobs overseas so we can create more of an income for ourselves to pay back these debts, they decide to borrow more money which means more money you have to pay back just in interest. Just this year alone, we will owe $350 billion just in the interest. So every time they talk about debt ceilings, quantitative easing, or the Fed says how it's going to you know, dump money into the system, it's not for free. We have to pay it back. Now, here's the part where we get screwed, because the government officials don't pay it back. They can gamble with that money and do with it whatever they want, like give CEOs, you know, bailouts and they give each other millions of dollars worth of bonuses because 
there's no risk involved on their end because they use the citizens, you and I, the taxpayer, to pay back these loans that can never technically be paid back because money is created by debt. In other words, for every time there's debt, there's money created. Now, that's only for the principal of what you borrow. In other words, if you borrow $100,000, the principal means you have to pay back the 100000 Interest is extra. So they don't create money that covers the interest. They only create the principal amount. So if there's $16 trillion in deficit, there's only that much money created. So that $350 billion that I was talking about in interest does not exist. So you can never pay it back. So the only thing they can do is either let it collapse, which is really what we really need, so we can reset the system, or they borrow more money to keep it going. That's the Ponzi scheme. That's the scam. And that's where it screws us. And that's why it cannot last forever, because they're taking a system and just keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it, which makes higher and higher interest, which separates the difference between the interest and the principal. Now, if you have a dollar over the principal, you're still not being able to pay it back. Now, we're not talking about dollar. We're talking about billions of dollars in interest per year, which every time they add more money to the deficit, we have to pay back more. So in other words, as long as we continue this Ponzi scheme, they can get away with it, but it can't last forever. Now, most people think that when they talk about collapses and problems with the economy, you know, they think about the bubble and they say, well, when is it going to burst? Well, no one really knows when, but think of it like blowing air into a balloon. When you first blow air, you know you have plenty of time. There's plenty of room, so you can continue to go. Eventually, you get to the point where that balloon is getting to the point where it can't go that much further. So you're basically waiting for it to pop. It's the same thing with the system. You cannot have finite money because if they create 100 gazillion dollars, just think how devalued the money is. Because look at it this way. How much are products today? How expensive they are? Now here's the trick. It's not really that they're getting expensive. It's the fact that because they keep creating more and more money, the dollar value goes down. So you need more of that money to make the same purchase. Now, I'll give you some examples of how even the person who doesn't think they're involved or it doesn't affect them, it actually does. Because if you look at the average household around the 50s and 60s, after World War II when the UN made the US dollar the world currency, there was usually only the man in the house that had to work while the wife could stay home and they would, the, the man would make enough income to be able to support the family and have a nice decent amount of savings. Folk bring it to about the late 60s, early 70s, it started getting to the point where the woman had to start going to work with the man. So instead of one person being able to take care of the household and the family, there now had to be two people. But they were still able to save some money. Scoot down to around the 80s. It got to the point now where you have the man and the husband and the wife working, but now they're not really able to scrimp and save. The money that they're making is just enough to get by. Move it to around the late 90s. Now, the good people are getting to the point where it's the husband, the wife, they're not able to save, and they're starting to purchase things on credit. In other words, they're getting to the point where they're paying all their bills and they have no money to left to buy things. So they have to use things like credit, like borrowing money or using credit cards. Now it's at the point where you have the husband and wife having to work. They can't afford to save anything. They're doing everything on credit. And now they're either on some kind of welfare program or they have to move back in with their parents. How many people are doing that these days because they can't even afford to be able to have a proper home anymore? You see how the cycle goes, where it gets worse and worse. Eventually, it'll get to the point where it just it has to explode or implode, whichever way you want to look at it. It's not a finite system. And when you talk about how the world was taken off the gold standard in 1971, 
Now, some people argue it was actually done earlier than that. I'm not talking about just the United States of America Corporation. In 1971, Richard Nixon had the whole entire planet go off the gold standard, which meant that they could print money at basically at will. And it's been a rapid growth in how much they borrow that we have to work for to pay back. So if you understand the system, you can understand this Ponzi scheme cannot last forever. So it's not a matter of if it will collapse. It's just a matter of when. In other words, when you keep blowing into that balloon, eventually there's no more room for that air, and that balloon has to pop. So it's the same thing here. So that's why when you protect yourself with things like gold and silver, and physical gold and silver, not paper, you're protecting yourself for that day. Now, that could be right around the corner. That could be five years from now. No one really knows unless you're part of the manipulation. But I always tell people, better to be five years too early than five minutes too late. So if you haven't researched this stuff, please start checking into it. And that's why physical gold and silver, things like this, that's some, a couple of silver coins I showed the other day, will help protect you in the future when the collapse happens. Now, they're going to keep borrowing money as long as people allow this system to continue. They're going to keep borrowing money until they can't do it anymore. But you notice how banks and countries are starting to hoard gold like crazy. It's not for tradition. They're, they're, they're saying to themselves, we have real money, we're storing that. And as long as fiat currency, these dollar bills, these yens, these euros, have some kind of purchasing value, we're going to use this garbage until we're not allowed to use it or we're not able to use it anymore. And then we'll just go back to the gold standard, which we already have in our vaults. The average person doesn't have gold and silver in their vaults. They just have this paper currency. So when it goes, what are you going to do? That's where you have to be careful. And that's if you don't think it's going to happen or you don't think it's going to affect you, you better be very careful about that because just like what happened in the Great Depression when the stock market crashed, there were millionaires that were bankrupt overnight. Don't be one of those people. So store your food and water now while you still can buy things with that fiat currency. Buy as much gold and silver as you can to prepare because it's not a matter of if it's just a matter of when you don't want to be that five minute too late person because hearing somebody say I told you so at that point when you can't buy food or water and you can't pay for your mortgage or your rent is not a consolation it's something you want to hear so that's why people like myself and others make videos like this not to scare you to prepare you to make you alert because your governments around the world are not going to tell you these things they're going to make sure that you're not smart enough or not educated enough to know these things. And that's why the average person today, like around Christmas time, for example, or even any other time of the year, that's why they come out with new iPhones, new gadgets, new toys. So the very little bit of money you might have, instead of investing in real protection, which is gold and silver, you're wasting it on stuff that's going to be worthless at some point. Because if you can't pay your electric bill anymore, you can't plug in your cell phone, you can't charge it, it's useless. So the same thing with women, how they change fashions every year, how they change different hemlines or they change from low heels to high heels because they want you to waste your money because then when the system collapses, you can't pay your debts anymore because you don't have real money. Guess what? They take everything that you own. And if you don't think they do that, look what they do to countries when they lend out billions of dollars to third world countries, bleed them dry to the point where the People cannot pay it back anymore, and then they just, like in Monopoly, the game of Monopoly, they take all the resources, and it becomes privately or corporate owned. Don't let that happen to your house, to your life. Please listen to my warning. If you don't believe me, listen to hundreds of other people that make these videos, but protect yourself now while you still have the ability. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Tell me what you think about this, and peace to everybody out there. Love you all, guys.